Looks like the Mammoth Lord's camp is under attack. Will we be able to save it? Let's find out. Coach of Harmattan's army. Harmattan? I was calling him Hartman. Scouts have sighted an army under the command of Captain Hartman, a conspirator and traitor. Soon be arriving in Dresden, the military council summoned the commander to an urgent meeting. That is one board meeting I probably shouldn't dodge. Commander, the troops from Nero Sion have arrived as planned. We set up a feast. The soldiers ate from the tables, laden with food, rejoiced, fraternized, and raised cups to victory together. Among these soldiers, Captain Harmattan came to his senses and refrained from giving any treasonous orders. Did you slip him some poison like I asked? It's all true! I realized I was about to commit a great betrayal, and, praise Ra, I stopped myself in time. I appreciate that, having learned from my plans, you didn't give the order to kill me immediately. You've granted me a chance to repent. There can be no excuses for my actions. I regret them. I humbly stand ready to accept your punishment. I knew you'd come to his senses. Harmattan always seemed like an honorable soldier to me. You should spare him. One who betrayed you will do it again. Unwise to give him the opportunity. What did you hope to accomplish? Because of Her Majesty, I admit, I have always believed that she is the only one who is fit to lead the crusade. Your appointment angered me because I wasn't serving the cause, only her. I served the Queen blindly against my better judgment and her own wishes. I'll never forget the day I first met her at my moment, my heart was lost forever. Of course, I didn't dare tell her my feelings. Instead, I chose the path of servitude. It's why I could only ever accept her at the end. That is the head of the crusade, but never you. What made you change your mind? Sir Thomas truly really knew our troops. Once they sat together at the table as brothers and sisters, I had already lost. Even if I gave the order, no one would have complied, but I already saw the madness of my plan. Forgive you and will leave your repentance sincere. Now serve me like you should have from the start. By Ra's name, I don't deserve your forgiveness and can be... For advice no longer. I must go to the front lines where I can redeem myself with blood. You have my thanks and my apologies. I praise your mercy, Commander. I can see why the troops are ready to follow you to the ends of the earth, or even to the abyss itself. This council and you personally have achieved the impossible. You have restored our morale and brought unity and order. You never listened to malicious detractors and stayed true to your cause. Working one step at a time, building a determined and unshakable army, one can defeat the force of the Abyss. A few years ago, none of the Crusaders would have even imagined the cause would amass this kind of power. At times, you built your war machine through very unconventional methods, but it would be foolish to deny their effectiveness. The results speak for themselves. I'm certain that no one will ever dare plot against you, Commander, or even doubt you. Let's put an end to this mutiny and deliver the final blow to the Abyss. Lead us forth, Commander. Oh, crap. All in one shot.
More or less, I mean. Revenge is sweet. Get your slow ass up there and take back that fort, mister. joke. Oh, let's go skip the day. I guess. Bastion Fortress Expansion. Bastion expanded into a fortress. Oh boy. Channing the Wicked Dope. The Feast of the Sacred Host. The celebration was successful. The higher powers and their strength are priests and the soldiers are glorified. Very nice. Enchant away, my friends. Logistics reform. A daring strike. The spies have reported that two high-ranking demons are currently at each other's throats and their forces are in disarray. The command staff is planning to take advantage of this infighting and is already preparing a daring surprise attack. The officers are asking commander to determine what should be the main focus. Seizing trophies. Gather intelligence. Maximum damage to the enemy. Always popular. Daring blow. Days. Reconnaissance? What does that do? Well, you just study a target. That's the target I mean. So that lasts for a whole week. Seizing trophies. <sighs> wow. That's a studied target, that's like what Slayers have. Gathering intel. Troops are ready to breach the demon's defenses and spies and agents will use opportunity to procure essential information. Shannon the Wicked Dope. Troops have arrived in Dresden from magical rituals over Salem's Road. Some want to purify, others want to revere the fallen Jordan, and wish to honor him. Why would you want to revere that nut job who hung around dead animals? Banish the dope or distill the dope? Who is more than follow their faithful comrade Salama? Again, there's a ritual of purification over his relic. No repair the spell put on the item. That was some good dope. Okay. 
should probably use those buffs, shouldn't I? I might just do that, actually. Oh, this drives me crazy. Um... Exactly one of our uh, hardened veterans. Uh. Having exterminated the Ravener Dragons and their undead slaves, Crusaders discover a huge cave full of treasures. The greed of these dragons was so insatiable that they couldn't abandon their trove even after death. I took it off their hands for you. Commander, the supply situation is still critical. 
And don't want to let kids find extra rations. Several Calgrans are already on their way. This is reality here and now. We can't feed our whole army. All our shipments get here, we'll have to cut rations. So exactly, we'll have to tighten our belts. It's for you to decide. I would proceed with caution and reduce everyone's provisions equally so as not to provoke any conflicts. There's still going to be discontent, so we'll need some fierce agitation in the ranks. We'll tell the soldiers that the situation is about to improve. As this is most likely a lie, but it's for their own good. Let's cut rations, then we'll do it, but we won't lie about it. We'll tell the troops that things are bad and may become worse in the future. Then we'll see who's here for the food and who came to fight for the crusade. Where does Hingren come from? They were, well, Mendel was stable. When Her Majesty departed for his, things began to gradually slide towards chaos. And now they're all the way there. We can't fight for ourselves. We can't grow anything on this land. We can't breed any cattle. All our food comes from a single source, Mendo's military warehouse. With every passing neighbor saying less food and more warning signs. Right, um... Lan wants to... Uh, everyone will join the effort to conserve as much food as possible. We'll tell it like it is. It stinks today. It's going to get worse tomorrow. If refuses to suffer through hunger, cold, and danger with us, it's free to go. The rest must grit their teeth and hold on. We've been through a lot, and we're going to make it through this too. And Orgalinda? I suggest we cut everyone's rashes harshly. We'll save some provisions in case there's a problem with new deliveries. And we'll have to fight the lack of food with campaigning. Just hold on a little longer. Our brave crusaders, such as the price of victory, and so on. It's vile. What else can we do? If we tell the truth, there will be panic and we'll lose the army. We'll damn everyone. It's great to live on propaganda. I've never spent my life learning the wrong stuff. Why can't we just magically conjure food? For mythic units, used by 25%. Tell the soldiers. Uh, tell the soldiers that we have trials and scarcity ahead of us. Let only those who are the most loyal to crusade remain. But I want to fight alongside anyone who is scared of a bit of hunger. There is nothing compared to demons. And this crisis will be over soon, one way or another. If we've done things right. I'll assemble this council again. Happily report our success to you. If not, well, we'll have done all we could.
and losses. Discoveries cultists have gathered a big pile of treasures, gold, bars of various metals, files with ingredients, tools, and supplies. Their actions seem to have no logic at all. They simply hoarded everything of any value to satiate the ultimately insatiable hunger of their lord. Bomb, you worked well last time. Going through the motions on that one. Right, it's one of the Nalfeshnis killed by the Crusaders was clutching a huge bloodstained bag in his arms. Inside the soldier discovers lots of weird trinkets, broken artifacts, relics that have lost their power, and other such oddities. It seemed like this demon took joy in collecting broken magical things. Voice of the Cursed Bard. Priest of Shellen only speak in the name of Francis the Cursed Bard in terrified whispers. There was a day when he was one of them, and his fame resounded from Varicia to Andorin. He traveled the world with a song and a smile and a lovely wife at his side. He dreamt of creating the song of all, and spent years gathering sounds and notes for the melody that would encompass the entire creation in supreme harmony. The laughter of a child, the confession of love, the triumphant cry, and the gentle lullaby all became sources for his inspiration. The journey brought the husband and wife to Dresden, where the great bard sang for the soldiers to inspire them before battle. But one night darkness descended upon Francis. You were gathering only the notes of joy, bard, it whispered mockingly, but there are so many other sounds you have never heard before, it murmured. Pay me with blood of your love, and I will reveal them to you. 
Francis attempted to resist Nocticula's seductive voice, but to no avail. By dawn, his hand reached for the knife on its own accord. He walked through the city, covered in his wife's blood, singing a song with a happy smile on his face, and nobody dared to stop him, so terrifyingly powerful was his voice. The call brought Francis to Alo Shinra, where he kept gathering the notes to compose the song of all, the cries of a mother whose children were butchered in front of her, with moans of a warrior whose hands were being chopped off, the wailing of lovers who would never see each other again. His cruelty astonished even demons, his murdered and tortured women and men, but the smile never left his face. Years went by and the song of all was almost complete. The cursed bird was lagging one final chord. He came to the flesh markets and walked among slaves, treating them to sweet wine and even sweeter songs. The thralls watched him with hope and timid smiles. They gratefully accepted the cup he offered, but wine's tangy aftertaste quickly gave way to searing pain. The bird's wine casket was full of poison that liquefied innards, and the moans of the dying joined Francis' song as its final note. The cursed bard drank the bitter dregs himself. He sang as he lay dying and was happy. The demons listened to his performance with bated breath. It was the song of all wicked, a hymn of the darkest night where the cursed fire burns bright. When Francis fell silent, his body was reduced to rancid ooze. The poison spared only the bird's vocal cords, which the demons preserved as a grisly relic. They became a memento to the most frightful, the most remorseless song Al Shinra had ever heard. Yeah, I was gonna wonder how he sang if the poison was like melting his throat. Let's block him from on there. Both there, but he can't attack.
have him flogged for running away like that. There we go. The undead, the soldiers start scouting the neighborhood looking for surviving enemies. One of them attracts his comrade's attention with a shout. He's found some stones that like the roof of a Sikorian house. After some digging, the soldiers find ruins of an inn and the remains of a trade caravan that was carrying some valuable cargo. It's never able to leave its shelter. Alright guys, I guess that will be another Battlefield Heavy episode. Um, yeah, so I think I'm going to start working on other Excalibur Exhumes. Might take a while, but it's progress there. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching again, and stay tuned for more. Bye-bye for now.